barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. I know you guys are as exhausted as I am from yelling at LeBron James that whole fourth quarter. I am exhausted. I accidentally cursed in front of my son, man. Oh, oh man. Drove me insane. <sighs> But before I dig into LeBron, I want to talk about how the NBA cheats in silent moments, man. Silent, quiet moments. And Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson, I guarantee you the producer, and I don't know the third guy's name, Mark Breen, Mark Breen, Mike Breen, Mark Breen. The producer in their ear told him not to mention that foul ever again. Because if Kevin Durant gets that third foul when LeBron James dunks on him, it changes the whole paradigm of the game. I think Kevin Durant scored eight points on that run, had two threes. Oh, there's, there's small moments in the game that we forget that are so big. You know, it changes the – he is the most unguardable guy. Man, I, I saw the tail end of Bernard King's career, and I thought he was one of the most unguardable guys I've seen. Um. Man, uh, the most unguardable guy I ever saw in college was Chris Jackson. For the older people, he's Mook Adu Rauf. He was probably the most unguardable guy I've ever seen in college. Um, and the pros, Kevin Durant just elevates to the to the clouds. Man, he's seven. He's a seven foot two guard. Oh man, he is. And you know the funny thing about this series is, if Durant doesn't sign with them. It's even, like, it's nip and tuck. These games are nip and tuck the whole way. It's just, but uh, NBA is fixed to some degree. They protect superstars, and uh, that, that changes the whole paradigm of it. it I mean, with, I don't, it is probably a two, one to two to three, maybe three possession game if Kevin Durant gets that third foul. Because remember, they went on like a 25-point turnaround, they said, or something like that. They were up 8, and they ended up going up by 11 to 13. I think 18, so for that matter. Anyhow, getting to LeBron James. LeBron James. Here's the one thing I don't like about LeBron James. Is Kevin Durant never picked himself up off the floor. Uh, on LeBron James' mistakes, he looks at other people. He missed about three or four defensive assignments, but there were some in the... In the first half, too, that he missed. You know, as I tell you guys, basketball is my first love. Boxing is my now my second love, obviously. But, uh, and why the fuck? Let me tell you, Tyron Lue, substitution pattern. He took Kyrie Irving out in the first quarter. First of all, you got to know when the, see, this is a nationally televised game. You got to know when the TV timeouts are coming. You got to know, you got five timeouts. You, you just got to know these things, man. And uh, his substitution pattern was piss poor. He kept four guys out there with one superstar. He had a stretch. It was two, uh, uh, three or four possession stretch where he had one superstar out there. Makes no sense. But LeBron James is the linchpin. The conversation is dead, whether he's better than Jordan, whether he's better than Kobe Bryant. Uh, I apologize because the reason why he is the best all-around basketball player I have ever seen in my life. He is the best all-around basketball player I've ever seen in my life. And he's going to say he had 40, 13, and 8 tonight. Wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. And you guys don't say 10 of the points came when it didn't matter. Maybe quite possibly, but it wasn't enough. The miss rebound when the rookie got the tip in. Uh, he was supposed to chip uh, Steph Curry coming around because he saw him. That's why he handed J.R. Smith. He was supposed to impede. He was supposed to, I mean, this is the way I'm taught. You never leave the man underneath the basket. But you were, and, and, and you can tell they never practiced those type of switches because J.R. Smith wasn't cognizant of it. And even if he does switch, it's just a duck in. Um, if you guys play basketball, a duck in is when you just throw it, you pivot, and you lay it in. And uh, 
I need to debrief. I'm going for I'm literally going for a run. I'm going to run in between three and four miles because I just need to decompress, man. Like, this game took so much out. And I was praying for a game on Thursday, man. Praying for a game on Thursday, but it didn't happen. Oh, man. Anyhow, man. I, I know you guys thoroughly enjoyed the game. I The first quarter, they should have been up by like seven to 11 points ending the first quarter, but they didn't finish quarters well. LeBron James... Last four minutes of big games bothers me. It literally bothers me because he goes to the rim looking to pass the ball. I remember in the All-Star game, Kobe Bryant says, shoot the ball. Listen, I never was a Laker fan. I was a Magic Johnson fan and then a Kobe Bryant fan. Magic Johnson is the only guy that I've ever seen at that level. I'm talking about super, super duper star that can smile and kick your ass. LeBron James, I, I I think he's caught in a conundrum where he wants to protect his image. Or maybe he's just not that guy. I don't know. But uh, the one thing I will say about LeBron, he needs to work on his post game because like Roy Jones, like Sugar Ray Leonard, your athleticism, your natural talent will give way at some point. And you got to have something you can go to. And I think in the offseason, he needs to start working more on his post game. Because if he posts up, because basically you're preparing to play Golden State again. I don't give a fuck what happens in the regular season. They can come in second, third, fourth, fifth. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? LeBron James can play 50 games instead of 82 games. But he needs to start preparing for moments like this. Because sometimes you got to... And now that I'm 39 years old, I understand my coaches now. Some, you gotta, when, when you're playing against up-tempo teams, sometimes you got to dead the basketball. And how you dead the basketball, free throw line and post-ups. And when you're young, 19, 20, you're running up and down the court. I was a fast point guard, past first point guard, had a great pull-up jump shot. And uh, I never understood why we threw the ball in the post. I mean, you understand it, but you don't have – the full complexity of what's going on in the game. And Cleveland never had no one to dump the ball down to, to dead the ball for three to four, maybe five, six, seven seconds. You understand what I'm saying? So congratulations to Kevin Durant. Congratulations to Steph Curry and the rest of the team. Uh, um, Mark Jackson is calling this game irate because he's a pastor and he stood up against homophobic homosexual tendencies, homophobic behavior, homosexual behavior. Oh, man. You guys can hear it in my voice. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm, uh. It was like I was born in Cleveland. It was literally like I was born in Cleveland watching this game. LeBron James is the best all-around player I've ever seen in my life. I never saw Oscar Robinson. I never saw Elgin Baylor. I never saw any of those guys. So, uh, he's a, he's a freak of nature. He would have been a pro athlete in basketball, football, volleyball, swimming, long jump. I don't know. He could have, he would have been pro in anything he done. God made him special. There's two people that I saw in my life. I saw LeBron James work out once. And I said, this guy, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And the second person I saw in a club in Vegas and I had to double take. It was Julius Peppers. And I says, I mean, God, no, I've never seen Cam Newton in person, but I think Cam Newton on TV looks like that guy, too. But uh, uh, I saw Julius Peppers in the club. I had to double take. I said, I can't believe this. He's just, you know, just God made them to be anything they wanted to become physically in terms of athletics. So anyways, man, um, barbershop conversation. I'm going to decompress. <laughs> this video is supposed to be two minutes. It ended up being nine, ten minutes. So. I <sighs> hope you guys enjoyed watching the game with your son. Basketball season officially over. And now I'm going to pause and listen to their comments. And I'm going for a run. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.